Our next speaker on our program is Ms. Elenwani Mutelo. Ms. Elenwani is going to share with us on a profession as a chartered accountant. So before she can just take over, uh, I just want to mention that Ms. Mutelo, uh, she runs the first and only Black Psyche accredited APC board course, and she was born and raised in Limpopo. Uh, she attended a high school at Chinange Secondary, completed a degree in CTA at uh, UCT, completed training articles at the National Treasury. She also completed a SEMA assessment in 2014. Uh, she spent most of the time at CIFA as uh, a credit analyst and later the regional manager. She's also the part and co-founder of Endunamo and she was a chief financial officer and a mentorship director in the company. Thank you so much for the introduction. As um, I've already been introduced, I come from a very rural area called Masakona, uh, Mashamba. I grew up there, went to school in Tingange. And while I was still schooling, I went to a trip in Cape Town and I was like, I wanna come I'll go study at Cape Town. That's where um, UCT, that's where I, co I completed both my degree and my CTA there. And um, I, I, I've always loved strategy. So my love for strategy after uh, having qualified as a CA, I was like, let me just check other profession, which will also assist me in, in, in enabling me or enhancing my strategy and uh, management accounting um, love. And then that's why I completed my CIMA assessment um, in 2014, 2012, 2013, uh, 2014. That's where I completed my CIMA assessment. And um, so I was asked really to just come talk to you about my journey um, as a chartered accountant. And uh, really, as I was listening through some of the questions you're coming through, I could hear that in the group, they're, they're different. The other uh, students who are interested in the CIMA route and in, uh, students who are interested in the uh, CA route. Really, for me, it, it, it starts with one thing, passion. What are you passionate about? What do you love doing? What is that one thing when you do, you feel like it's not a chore? And even when you are, you're, you're over and above, um, even when you're exhausted, what's that one thing which will wake you up? And for me, uh, really, uh, even when I was still just uh, uh, going through my, my studies, I remember when I was doing my my last year of, of, of my degree, I almost quit because I was like, I, I think this is just too much. But I kept my eyes on the ball. The ball was that I wanted to be a CA. The ball was that I wanted to have my own financial freedom. I was tired of asking money from my mom who has five kids and um, just a mere teacher. So for me, it was financial freedom. And when I really researched about uh, then when I was still doing my uh, my studies, which um, which profession will assist me to get out of uh, that, that current circumstance which I was finding myself and it was a CA and it just so happened that I used I loved commercial subjects so for me really after I passed uh, from grade 12 and I went on to do my degree even when I had those challenges um, through my, 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 my degree uh, through almost exclusion uh, from doing CTA at, at UCT it's just that part of saying that I always kept my eyes on the goal I always say that, you know what, yes, it could be challenging now, but you know what, you just have to keep on pushing. And even when CTA came, um, it was just another monster for another a discussion for another day. But really what kept me going was that, again, the passion, what I was trying to get myself to. Even when I ran out of passion was the fact of saying that you've got to look back. You wanted, your main goal was financial freedom. And if, um, I guess maybe limited information, if you quit here now, you will not have... Um, as the, you you not have achieved what you had purpose for yourself. So for me, it really was just to continue to push. And um, it's, it's just been an amazing period. Um, qualified as a CA in 2012, and that's when I went on to do my CIMA assessment. And maybe just a bit of a journey in terms of um, the article, life as an article clerk or li life as nowadays they call it a CAA trainee. Uh, for me, it really started uh, bumping. As you can see, that I did my articles uh, both at EY, Anson Young, and at National Treasury. Um, and and maybe just to break it out, 
I, I'm also one of the reasons why you see the differences is that I'm not a fan of auditing. I have someone noting that they're not a fan of auditing. CA is not all CAs are a fan of auditing. I'm I for one, I'm not a fan of auditing, but I'm a chartered accountant. And you don't need to, and that's another aspect which I like about being a CA is that it does not limit you in one discipline. You can, as you, those who are following that path, you will know that you've got four disciplines which you really specialize on, which you have, you do through your 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 training articles, through which you, you do through your CTA and your undergrad degree. So you get to see that, you know what, you could be a CA and not have anything to do with audit. As you can see, I started my articles at EY. EY had sponsored my, 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 my studies when I was at UCT. So I got there and it didn't go well. Um, audit was just, um, it didn't click when I was still doing my undergrad, my CTA. And even more so, even when I went on to do my articles, it still didn't click. And for me was to say another aspect, I finished, um, I think it was almost on the eighth month when I was like, oh, I don't think I, 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 it's in me to become an auditor. And that's when I decided that, you know what, I'm gonna leave um, um, Ernst & Young and go join, then it used to be tip and top, what we call um, the top uh, training program with National Treasury. And again, you know, nowadays a stereotype will be asking you, Ere, you're leaving a big, one of the big four or five audit firms to go to government. And for me, it was just also to say that I've always had the love for finance, uh, financial management, uh, management accounting, strategy. And when I looked around, really, National Treasury, they 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 really hold um, the, the 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 finance of 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 the entire country. They hold the finance of the entire government. And when I went there again, it was that aspect of saying that you need to focus on what you're trying to achieve as an individual. Yes, you get in a working place and you'll have different people who will you will be interacting with. You'll have different people who have got different goals. So for me it was to be a seasoned CA. And I went there to say that, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a trainee, but I'm going to make sure that I absorb as much as I can. I'm going to make sure that I ask questions. I'm going to make sure that I make this training um, article the opportunity to be the best. And one of the other, as, as, as I was could, I continue to, to, to do my article, one of the other aspects which I got to see was that, you know, you need to set yourself apart. And because all of us are going to do training articles, but when you finish, um, the CA route really gives you opportunities in terms of saying that when you do your, um, after you've passed your CTA, you almost guaranteed a job. But then it's also that part of saying that is during those articles, which you need to set yourself apart to make sure that after you've qualified, you're really a set apart chartered accountant. And that's how I continued with my behavior in different uh, um, uh, units. I went to the, the budget division, made sure I learned as much as I, I, as I could in that budget division. I went to the division where they do the, uh, the, the, the bonds, which, are, uh, which, um, which will be um, um, ran through the Reserve Bank. I, I learned as much as I could. I interacted with the different um, SOEs to say that you go to um, the division where they will just be doing the different uh, state-owned entities, uh, where you'll be analyzing the likes of SABC financial statements, the ESCOM financial statements, when they're saying that they want a big, they, they, they're looking for the guarantee from the government. I'll be one of the team members. I'll raise my hand to say that, you know what, um, let me just understand when you guys saying that ESCOM is here to uh, request a bank guarantee, a, a guarantee for their funders, which is, needs to be backed up by the government, which is National Treasury again. So for me, I really uh, truly made my experience again there within National Treasury so that I, I extracted as much information because I saw it as again a training ground of the CA which I was going to become. I didn't see it as a government institution, but I saw it as how much can I extract out of this government institution so that I get to set myself um, apart, so that I get to learn as much as I could. And really, um, even some of the lessons which I learned in there, and one of the other aspects which I truly learned as a, CA, um, as a, as a training uh, clerk or as a, as a trainee um, moving from different division was, was uh, professional skills and personal skills. Because you can imagine, uh, you've got three months in one division, you work with certain uh, people who've got their own different attributes, who've got their own um, behaviors. So one of the other skills that, yes, when I got to 
my training articles, I had the technical skill. So what I needed to make sure was to say that, yes, you have the skill, but then as I interacted with the different uh, individual, those who are training me or those who are training with me, is to make sure that I also enhance my professional skill. So yes, um, it, it was not, the, you know, being a trainee is not always great, uh, but then I, I, I also looked at it to say that, what do I want to get out of it? What do I want to make sure that I set myself my, set myself apart? And again, is that part of saying that, you know what, I need these hours. Um, as Mr. Cecilia was also saying, to say that I needed to make sure that I need all these hours so that when I, it's time for me to be signed off, um, um, I, um, I don't find myself wanting because I didn't take my training uh, period as serious as I should. And you can imagine that um, if you... Uh, any of you, if, for example, you have ch you have changed your, your articles from one firm to the next, you'll hear that they give you a penalty. So I also had that penalty. But then through also making sure that um, I continuously invest in my growth and learn from different individuals which I had um, during my training period to make sure that I, I learn and I grow, it, it, it really got to build me to be the CA I am now, to be... Um, and to also, like, as I was saying that, you know, the CA route gives you um, 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 almost a guarantee for having training articles, but it's what you will do during your training period, which will assist you in getting that job, which you want post the articles. So post the articles. Um, also, um, I, I finished my articles in 2012, um, got to negotiate a bit. Uh, with 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 Saika so that I don't save. Um, at first, the 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 penalty was tough tough month, but it ended up being I think about six months because again I did put in the hours and making sure that I tick on on those competencies which Saika requires for you to be signed off. So I got signed off um sometime in um end of 2012. That's when I started my SEMA assessments uh, because that's one of the other aspects. Uh, which I was interested in. And for me, um, it, what, what I also wanted to share with you is that life um, um, as, a, um, as, as a training clerk, it, it's got so many opportunities. And I had this slide just to just show you the different opportunities which it also has afforded me. So after um, I finished my, 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 training, uh, my, my training program, I got signed off. Um, I worked uh, for about six months at National Treasury as a financial analyst, where again there I was saying that I would uh, interact with the different um, SOEs in terms of the reporting for the for for the for for, for the for the financial statements when they needed to finalize. I'll interact with the different departments where they needed to consolidate the financials into a an, into a particular sector for reporting by National Treasury and reporting for that particular department, for example. So I, it, it, it really gave me the, those opportunities. And after I left, um, uh, six months later, I left um, National Treasury to go and become a product controller at uh, the then, it was still called Barclays Africa, which now is just APSA Capital, uh, where I was also involved in terms of, again, my love for financial uh, management also drew, drew me to this, um, and drew me to this role where I was a product controller. What our my main really um, objective there was just to report in terms of that they've got different products, either being um, money money market accounts, uh, money market account futures, um, hedges where the the different traders will be on. I needed to report in terms of profit, and I also needed to report back to sub. So for me, I saw it as a connection to say that when I was a treasury, I did, we did work with sub in terms of the different bonds. And then now when I'm at APSA, I do work with sub in different, in terms of the different reportings, which also as a bank, APSA needed to report to sub. I truly enjoyed that role. Um, I, I was there for two years and this again, just to also just paint to say the different opportunities, which also um, the profession does award you. I got to go to CIFA, which is a DFI, uh, as a credit analyst, um, it's not something which I would have planned. You know, when you become, when you're a CA, you're thinking you're going to be a financial manager, you're thinking you're going to be a CEO, a CFO, those kind of roles. So for me, when this role came about, I was like, oh, something I'm passionate about, entrepreneurship, uh, um, black businesses. So when it came about that this is an institution which funds small businesses, um, 
uh, which are starting up or those which are intending to grow. Uh, for me, I saw it as another opportunity. And this also, again, it really works towards uh, what I'm passionate about, which is about strategy. When as a credit analyst, when I'm reviewing a funding proposal, yes, it will be a business plan. It will be a fin model. But then I needed to understand the strategy on how they need they're gonna um, how how they're gonna grow, how they're gonna make money. And again, both my chartered accountancy um, um, uh, experience and expertise coupled with SEMA, they truly assisted me in also excelling and in leading in in one in my team. And that again, I, I'll continue mention excelling because of the hard work which I've also invested in that as a credit analyst, I got promoted to be a regional manager. And this again, it was a different aspect because it was interesting to say that, you know, as CAs, you know, we are not known for selling. And as a regional manager now, I was now no longer being on the on the back office where applicants would bring um, or regional offices will bring application for funding to me and then I'll assess and say, oh, this is doable, this is not doable. But now I was now in the front office of saying that businesses come to CIFA, we will fund you and now selling that business. And this again, really I resonated with my passion because I'm really passionate about strategy. So now when I see a business case, I will try to work with the business owner to see how then do we manage it up? How do we brush it up? How do we make it such that when it goes to credit, now my experience for credit was now coming in handy. Say so now when it, go, it goes to credit, you know what, it's almost polished and it's almost ready for really truly approval and not decline. Truly my, enjoyed my time as, as a regional manager because this was really truly outside of my comfort zone. It was um, outside of, uh, you know, my core experience because mainly is in selling. And this, again, this is where, I, but then for me, it was also that part of the entrepreneurial area which I bring about. And as you'll see that um, overall, um, though I was, um, I think once I became a credit analyst and a regional manager, I was already involved uh, with Endunamo. Uh, so in Endunamo, how was I involved? Um, as as you, um, you would have seen in the presentation is that I'm one of the core co-founders of, 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 of Endunamo. So this is um, where I was always involved in when we're saying that I'm the financial manager. So at first, when we started Endunamo in 2013, this year we celebrate our year. year. When we started Endunamo in 2013, just after I qualified together with uh, the other two CAs, for us was just that we saw a need. We, we understood um, that um, the profession really requires a lot. But then when we saw a need for the candidates who need support for them to, um, to ease um, the, 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 the route in them becoming a CA, that's how really Endonamo was formed. My first involvement, um, my initial involvement was just mainly on the background, uh, the form formation of, of, of Endonamo. But then what I was uh, mainly involved in was from the finance side and the mentorship side. But now currently, I am um, actually um, the, the managing director. So I'm the managing director who manages, um, I manage these three brands. Uh, so what does that mean uh, when I say that I'm the managing director of, 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 of Endunamo? Really for me is to make sure that this is the brands which you take out um, to, to, the, to the different stakeholders. I manage the three brands. What we, 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 we go and um, together with, my, with, with, with the team which, we, which supports me to say that this is what we believe that we'll be able to assist our customers and then this is how we're going to implement it. I communicate with different stakeholders to say that, okay, if your stakeholder will need assistance from a CTA perspective, this is how then do we, we make sure that we best implement, again, the strategy. Uh, we best implement our strategy to make sure that we have a value add for not only um, ourselves, but value add for the different customers we have. And this is again, which are one of the other aspects, which has what has truly enabled me to now be able to run an institution as big as Endunamo. It's really those, the, the different training program which I went through, the, the, the degree, those, that, those different theories which you guys are doing now, the pastels, uh, the five forces, um, you know, when you're assessing uh, the financial analysis, really, it, you, you'll get to see it as you grow, that, you, you know, the, the way which you, in, you, you invest in, in your education, the way you invest in your training as well, the way which you invest also when you become an employee, it really builds you. 
and also like I was saying that the way which I also invested when I was interacting with different businesses, now I get now when I'm here, I own this business and I need to make something out of it. This, the different strategies which I implement here, it's really the things which I've learned through my degree, is the things which I really learned through my, my, my CTA, is the things which I've learned through my training articles. But this just goes to say that, you know, there's so many possibilities which one can build that now I get to stand that, Yes, I could have been just um, a child from some dusty area, which maybe none of you even know, called Hamasa Corner. But now I am the managing director. When Saika calls to say that uh, we have accredited you for uh, for the Indian Normal Professional course, which we, like we've noted that we're the only first, we're currently we're the only black accredited to offer the APC. And um, again, um, it's, it's, it's really been truly amazing because now we have even grew to now outside our borders. Now we just got um, accredited by ICAS, which is the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Zimbabwe. So for me is to say that you you you, you should not uh, undermine the the, the 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 different aspect which you're going to have through even now when you're still studying. They really do add up. And every bit of it, it truly adds up such that you'll find yourself as this well-rounded um, professional, as you find yourself as an impactful professional, where you are now able to just go back and give back to the profession, to give back um, to the next um, person who will also be in the journey. So for me, this um, the, uh, when when um, I was invited to come chat with you, I found it as, as, as to be an honor because I was like, I get to share my journey with you so that one day you'll also find yourself to be not in the same position, but similar position as myself, that you'll also go back and share also your journey with someone else so that you can empower them so that as they get empowered, you know, we continue to transform the profession and we get to be improved as, 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 as professionals. And we, 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 we transform also our nation and as we continue to grow ourselves in an individual basis. So that's really truly myself, but outside of, um, in terms of some of the other aspects which I do, I think I've already touched up with this um, as, as, as a managing director of Endonamo is just okay. Go back, going back to you guys, um, education, making sure that we are running a sustainable and a financial sound organization. Something which you also study through your, which you're currently studying through your, 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 your become degrees to say that, what does this mean? You know, it, it's amazing that I still go back and refer back to some of my study material, those which I will not have seen uh, in a long time, uh, or I'll eavesdrop when Fedi and Rendani and the team are teaching to say, oh no, now I understand when Saika says that, uh, you need to have a continuous professional development is because I need to continuously enhance myself uh, to make sure that I'm, I continue to be relevant. So all in all, what I'm just trying to say is that, you know, where you at now, it really builds up and what you put in now as a student, it really does build up for you to become a certain professional and it really adds up and you need not to undermine it and you need not to feel like it's just a lot, but it adds up and then you will truly find yourself where you really want to be. Um, I've just found myself, I, I, wouldn't, I would have never dreamt that I would uh, be a managing director for um, an organization as big as Endunamo. But then I guess um, through the different small, small contribution and the small hard work which I've been doing, I find myself to be here and to just also have those aspects where I get to celebrate with the different stakeholders, being it um, in uh, different corporates, being yourself as well when you get to be successful in your different uh, academic journey. So for me, that's um, what I thought I would share with yourselves. Um, yes. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's just what I wanted to share. And just the impact overall, which we also have out there in terms of you know, I find myself to be privileged that, you know, I get to contribute to the profession that, yes, you are a CA, but it's a CA area. What, how are you contributing back into uh, the profession? So for me, when I see uh, some of the stats um, which we have as an organization and myself as an individual having contributed in the profession, I get to go back and say that, you know, at those tears which I used to cry in my undergrad degree when I'm almost getting a DP. Um, I don't know what it's called at UNISA. You know that you need to reach 40% to write your, your, your exam. 
you know, they, they, they didn't, they were not in vain because now I get to celebrate um, not only myself, SSCA, but I also get to celebrate others as um, chartered accountants. There is a question here um, that says, in the event that you are doing your SICA accredited degree to become a CA and are working in, fi in a finance role, but not aligned with the articles, that is CA training program, would there be any credit given for one when when they have to do their articles or they will have to start from the beginning with their articles or background employment will get them some credit. All right, um, I'll, I'll take that, uh, but I, I, I believe that, that that was the proper question for, for, for Mr. Teche, but I'll, I will take it uh, based on my experience. So as, 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 as far as, uh, as I'm aware is that there is something which Saika calls recognition of prior learning. We used to call it RPL, where they can go and assess in terms of saying that, let's say, for example, you were a financial accountant for five years and now you need to register for your training, uh, for training articles. There is something which they call recognition of prior learning, where they will go, you will need to also con uh, um, complete um, what uh, Mr. Tetley was also referring to of um, your, in, TMS, I believe it's TMS, yes. Uh, it has changed names since my, my, my training days of completing because you'll have the different uh, competencies in the different disciplines. So if some of the competencies which you achieved aligns with the SICA uh, competency areas, yes, they, will, uh, they may recognize those, but that is still within the discretion of SICA. And also, it's, the, it's also within the discretion of some of the training offices because the training office, the standard uh, training uh, term they normally have is three years. But then the recognition of prior learning is done through SICA. And then in terms of you getting your training contract, will we, we'll be with the particular training firm, which I know that the list of that is also available on the SICA website. Uh, this is a question from Tapelo Shandu. Um, Shadum Tapelo says, thank you for this. I have just read Regulation 25 along with Regulation 18 and have a follow-up question. Does the assessment that the individual may have to undergo as may be prescribed by SICA happen to be an addition to the ITC and APC? I'm not sure if you got that question. Uh, a gist of it, but maybe what I um maybe in terms of the process in order for one to become a chartered accountant, there are compulsory assessments which one needs to take. So one you need to be uh, once you uh you you complete your degree, which is psych accredited, you get to sit for the fourth first board exam, which is the initial of test of competence, ITC, which is being referred to that. Everyone needs to take it regardless of um, whatever prior uh, qualifications you may have. Everyone who's within uh, the, 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 the route of becoming a chartered accountant through the traditional route. I think, yeah, I need to emphasize that through the traditional route, they need to take um, to sit for the initial test of competence. And that that one, they will sit for it right after your, your, you complete your degree. And after that, you need to have a training um, to be in the training program for 20 months before you sit for the assessment of professional competence, which is what we call the second board. So those are the two um, assessments which one needs to, they're compulsory to sit before you can, together with your training um, articles and uh, which you need to complete before you can be admitted into becoming a chartered accountant. So those cannot be replaced by anything else unless if you're coming through the the CIMA route when uh, but again if you're coming through the CIMA route is that you need to be again what you call uh to be to, to have completed your CIMA um assessment which is the last uh, case study which is the strategic case study and you need to have already be admitted to be a CGM, CGMA the Chartered Global Management Accountant with CIMA and have a letter of good standing with CIMA and then that's when, if you come through that route, again, also SICA needs to validate that, then that's when you'll be able to sit for the last uh, board exam, which is the assessment of professional competence, then you can be admitted into the profession. 
All right, thanks, Chair. And Elwana, I think you pretty much covered the questions in detail. And yeah, I think those questions are more directed to me. So thank you so much. So what I just wanted to add on is in terms of, for example, the, um, the assessment that Tapelo was referring to. So that, that assessment speaks to trainees or individuals who seeks to have an exemption from doing a training contract. So that is covered in, train, in training regulation 25. So that's for specific individuals. You can have a look there. You pretty much need to have ITC already and you need to have relevant work experience for 60 months, if I'm not mistaken. So only then you can apply for that exemption from doing a training contract. So if you are successful, you wouldn't have to do a training contract per se, you would be able to do APC. So pretty much you would need to have your ITC, as she has already mentioned, ITC, then you can do your APC without doing a training contract. So yeah, so that's that. And then just to put on the RPL. So that RPL, the training officer would need to do, the new training officer would need to do an assessment of your competence to see how much RPL they can grant you. And also important to note is that if the experience that you have was outside a training contract environment, it would be limited to 12 months. But if that experience was in a training contract environment, you'd be able to get pretty much all of it. All, all of that man, all, all of those months is RPL. And let's say your training officer deems that you can't or you don't have the, the competence to get all the months as RPL, then they can definitely give you less months as RPL. Thanks. All right, there's no, a question fine. here that yes. says if I'm a registered advanced diploma, uh, oh, if I am re registered advanced diploma in accounting sciences, your financial accounting, can I be a CA? I think they are asking if they are doing an advanced diploma in accounting sciences. Um, can they be a CA or should they be doing an advanced diploma maybe in financial accounting because they are different? Yes, I think one of the other, it, it's always important that when you, um, in order for you to check in terms of the alignment of your degree, because those, um, the different degrees needs to be accredited by SICA in order for you to be able to go through the CA route. So I, you know, the different details, um, there are minor details which may, may be different or not, but then what you can do is that um, you can always drop us drop drop us an email on the email address, which I, I, I have noted there. Therefore, we'll just check in terms of the actual code which you have, if that is the degree which is in line with the um, of the SICA accredited degree in line of your, 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 your CA route. So that that it's always um, better that we always just check the actual degree which you have in line with the accredited ones by SICA. So you can always just drop an email at admin at normal A and we'll definitely respond back to you to confirm if that degree which you have is in the same route at for you to become a CA. So this one, um, the question says, are uh, Edunamo officers or training officers only in Midrand? And what time do the classes okay? And are they online or face to face? Again, are they one on one or do we do them as groups? All right, great. I partially responded to that, but maybe for those maybe who are not yeah. also able to see the chat, our offices, um, our campus uh, in Midrand, opposite Galaga um, Avenue. The classes, uh, our classes, because we have a widespread of candidates even outside of Houting, they are online. And those classes which we will have, for example, which we say that they, we do offer them also at our campus, we also stream those online and everyone can join via Teams as we're doing here. So, and also all the material is available online. So we do cater for candidates even outside of the Midrand area or the Houting area. And also, I've also left um, both the contact details so that if there is anything which anyone needs to further clarify, they can just contact um, our office and then we'll take it from there.